I didn't see this coming. Read the text from my mom. I've met someone. I'm in shock. My stepdad died three years ago. My mom's been insistent. She's not seeking out love again. In my mind, I've got my nearly 70-year-old mom in a sterile box where she'll serve out the remainder of her days, <laughs> tidying her one-bedroom citizen, cit senior citizen apartment, taking care of her little Mal Maltese, spending her evenings browsing Amazon, watching Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> periodically moonlighting on the weekend as grandma for my kids. That's it. <laughs> That's my vision for my mom. Why didn't I see this coming? When you imagine a nearly 70-year-old widow, you're probably not seeing my mom. She's fit and vibrant, super animated going on brisk walks with her Maltese around her neighborhood, bouncing on her Skechers tennis shoes, out in Chico's wear, head to toe accessorized, color coordinated earrings and necklace to go along with her immovable frosted dyed bleach and amber hair. I read the message again. I've met someone. Something's got me worried. Romantic relationships bring out the absolute worst in my mom's personality, triggering her chronic insecurities and, and volatility. Both of her marriages were codependent nightmares with emotionally unavailable alcoholics. This chemistry often explodes with ear-shattering ear screaming, slamming doors, desperate sobbing. I should have seen this coming. I want to know who she's met, but I don't want to know, but I need to know right now. I call my mom. Hey, got your text. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pretty crazy. It's happening so fast. Well, let's hear the details. Here's the details. She met Gil Harper on Facebook a month ago. He, He's a widower. His wife and daughter were, were killed in a car accident 10 years ago. He, he lives in London and, and owns his own business selling oil pipeline. He's recently acquired a $5 million contract that allows him to live and work anywhere in the world. Gil and my mom have fallen in love. She says they are soulmates. She says this is God's plan. They've never spoken. They've never met. He's flying into LAX in two days and is moving in with my mom. Can you at least agree to Skype with him before you meet him at LAX? There's a pause. Yeah, I'll tell him we need to talk. I get off the phone, my heart's pounding, my head is throbbing red, bells, whistles, foghorns, and whatever other noise-making contraptions are going off in my head, simultaneously sounding the alarm. He's independently wealthy, can live and work anywhere in the world, and he's choosing to move into my mom's one-bedroom senior citizen apartment in the suburbs of LA. Something is very, very wrong with this story. I need to get to the bottom of this. So something about me, I am the unofficial family hero. <laughs> and I have been since I was 11 or 12, when my mom, in her desperate sobbing, began to confide in me her fury with my dad's constant drinking. When I listened and reassured her, it, it seemed like things would get back to normal much faster. So I felt like I was helping, and I started to intervene in my parents' screaming bouts, physically coming between them, pleading with each of them to change their ways. Dad, please, just stop drinking. Mom, come on. You haven't even given him a chance. Come on, you guys. Talk to each other. I was desperate to succeed in saving the marriage. I failed. I, conti 
Yeah, I, I continued to be my mom's confidant into her marriage to my stepdad and through the ensuing madness. Every time she came to me in tears and falling apart at the seams, I dropped everything and took charge of the crisis. Until I finally realized how dysfunctional this arrangement was and stopped being my mom's therapist. Once my stepdad died, the frantic morning phone calls all but disappeared. I felt totally free and unburdened until now. The arrival of Facebook Gill has me very suddenly falling back into hero mode to save my mom from herself. I don't need to get sucked into this, but damn it, I want to be sucked into this. <laughs> I start doing my self-talk. Healthy boundaries, Chris. She's an adult. <laughs> she can solve her own problems. But the gravitational force of my family role is overpowering any notion I might have that I can simply allow this train wreck to unfold. I drop everything, leave work, spend the next two hours obsessively scouring Google for anything resembling this crazy story. In the process, I discover a crime I've never heard of, a romance scam. Here's the way it works. The scammer poses as a widower, living alone, out of the country, independently wealthy, rapidly proclaiming true love before traveling on business. Sound familiar? According to these websites, the next step in the con is a frantic communication from Gil in a travel crisis. He can't access his funds. He needs my mom to wire him money to save him. I'm now quite certain my mom is the victim of a romance scam. According to the experts, my mom's effectively under a spell. She's like an addict intoxicated by a steady dose of promises of love and financial security. The experts advise to stop reasoning with the victim. This will only alienate me and drive her into the virtual arms of the scammer. Just as I'm starting to feel completely hopeless to break the spell, I get a break in the case. <laughs> Another text comes through from my mom. It's Gil's phone number. They're gonna talk later tonight. I discover, number's not from England, I am sure the number's a phony. I'm definitely calling it. What do I do if he answers? I think I have an idea. You see, my whole life, as hard as this is to believe, when I talk on the phone, people think I'm a woman. <laughs> For a six foot tall bearded man to be repeatedly called ma'am on the phone, can be surprisingly awkward and infuriating, <laughs> especially when the moment comes to correct the opera. Actually, it's sir. <laughs> this has been a true lifelong annoyance. <laughs> Until now. When the seed of a notion explodes full bloom into impulsive action, and I'm, I'm already dialing the number, so don't even have time to practice what I'm gonna sound like when I pretend to be my mom right now. <laughs> That's right, this 40 year old right here, this bearded man is gonna pretend to be his mom <laughs> on the phone with Facebook Yill. <laughs> You're damn right I'm gonna record it too. <laughs> Phone's ringing, shit, my heart's pounding. There's a click, some static. Hello? Hello, Gil. I, it's Karen. Hello, baby. It's so nice I hear your voice, baby. Finally, we get to talk, Gil. I, I have to say, my family's very worried that you're not who you say you are. Oh, baby, don't have to say that. That bad, I make it a surprise to show them my face, baby. I so much love you so much, baby. <laughs> this goes on for five minutes, <laughs> and then I really turn the screws. Gil, 
Can we just do Skype right now? I'm kind of busy right now. I told you about your goods. I got to check at the seaport. I can't talk on Skype right now. You seem to be getting angry. Don't get angry at me. This is our first time being able to talk, and you're already getting angry. I don't know, Gil. I don't think this is going to work out. I have to go. Bye. <laughs> I hang up. Pure hot-blooded adrenaline fuels a kind of manic, fist-pumping victory dance in my living room. <laughs> my daughters are asleep in the other room, so I have to go outside and walk down the street to fully unleash my ecstasy. <laughs> yes! I got you, motherfucker! Of all my interventions through the decades of my mom's romantic disasters, this one feels like my Mona Lisa. <laughs> the Sistine Chapel of crisis interventions. Somewhere, somewhere in the middle of this, it occurs to me though, wow, I'm, I'm basically celebrating the fact that I'm about to call my mom to devastate her. And my mood shifts with this realization. I'm suddenly dreading how my mom's going to react to hearing the recording. Will it be enough proof to break the spell? And if it is, how completely will she fall apart? I make the call, telling her about the conversation and the recording. She wants to hear it. I send her the recording and wait. Ten minutes later, she calls. You're right, Chris. He's a scam. My mom's dejected tone triggers an unexpected, sorry, uh, unexpected sadness in me. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm, I'm so sorry. There is no Gil Harper from London. The spell is broken, and now, as is so often the case, so is she. The aftermath of playing the hero for my mom is always so unsatisfying. I resent myself for getting sucked in and for wanting her praise and recognition to feel good about myself. It just feels so wrong. But this time, because of the recording, it feels so right. <laughs> I'm so damn proud of myself. <laughs> Clearly, right? Yeah. I play the tape for anyone who will listen including the producers of one of my favorite podcasts, Criminal. <laughs> Hoping they'll think it's Radio Gold. <laughs> the producers love the tape and the story behind it and want to make an episode about romance scams. <laughs> There's one catch. They want to interview both me and my mom for the episode. <laughs> do you think she'll do it? I don't know. If you've ever been tricked, conned, duped, scammed, whatever you want to call it, you can relate to the intense feeling of shame that follows. And all you really want to do is hide away and try to forget about it. You, what you probably don't want to do is talk about getting scammed on a national podcast. <laughs> but I make a pitch to my mom about getting revenge on this dude by exposing him and people like him so they won't hurt others like her. Within a week of the romance scam ending, my mom and I are in KPBS studios <laughs> with oversized headphones on our heads being interviewed by the host of the podcast. During the interview, I watch a shift occur in my mom that I've seen before as she goes from just sitting meekly, almost childlike, slouched over, speaking softer than usual before awakening into her fully possessed self, occupying all the available space in the studio, stealing the whole interview <laughs> with an epic reveal of her last words to Facebook, Gil. I told him he should get a gun and blow his fucking brains out. <laughs> the podcast host is caught off guard, you know, slightly amused of this sudden and intense rise to power. I am not. <laughs> That's my mom. And this is me doing what I do in moments like these, avoiding notice, 
shrinking into the background while taking yet another invisible bow.